Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial system. We have x plus y equals 4 and x cubed plus y cubed equals 4. And we're going to be solving for x and y values. I'm also going to show you a graph at the end. Now, how do we solve such a system? Obviously, there's more than one way to do it. And I think I'll be presenting at least two methods. And let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to use substitution. I want to isolate y, so let's go ahead and subtract it. First equation gives us y equals 4 minus x. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug this in here, replace y with 4 minus x. We're going to cube it. Let's go ahead and use uh, the formula. You can use the binomial theorem for this, or there's a formula that I use, but let's go ahead and use binomial theorem this time. We're going to cube the 4 minus 3 times 4 squared, which is 16. Let me go ahead and write it as 16. Actually, I can go ahead and use the formula first and then simplify it maybe next. So we start with 4 cubed minus 3 times 4 squared times x plus 3 times 4 times x squared. You get, you get the pattern a cubed minus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus minus b cubed, which is x cubed. And that'll be equal to 4. Awesome. Obviously, one of the most important thing here is that x cubed cancels out. Great. Now, let's see what we have left. We have 12x squared. And then minus 3 times 16, which is going to be 48x. Plus 64 minus 4, because we're subtracting. But let's go ahead and write it this way first. And then we're going to go ahead and subtract 4 from both sides. And that's going to give us 12x squared minus 48x plus 60 equals 0. Awesome. Now, this equation can be solved easily with the quadratic formula, but there's one thing that will make our life easier, and that would be factoring out the GCF, which is the greatest common factor. In this case, it's 12. We get x squared minus 4x plus 5. And if you think this is factorable because two numbers whose product is 5 and whose sum is negative 4, you're wrong because, sorry, the bitter truth. But uh, even though this looks factorable, if you switch to 4 and 5, yes, that's going to be a different story. So if we had this, then you could find two numbers, negative 1 and negative 4, that satisfies this. But as is, this is not factorable, at least in the real world. So what is that supposed to mean? It means let's divide both sides by 12 and try to solve this by, there's two ways you can use here. One of them is completing the square. The other one is the quadratic formula, whichever one you like. Okay, let's do the completing the square method. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 5 from both sides and then add the special number. That would be half of 4 squared, which is 4. And that will make the left-hand side a perfect square. And that is x minus 2 to the second power. And there are two numbers whose square equals negative 1, especially if you've seen the videos that I made on my other channel, A plus BI, hopefully you did, because there's a problem like this one over there. Anyways, uh, you hopefully know that I squared is negative 1. But I is not the only number who, that satisfies this, because negative I squared is the same as I squared. Why? Because negative times negative is positive, right? So from here we get two solutions. X minus 2 can be plus minus I. I know that's not the symbol for plus minus, but that's how I write it. Too bad. And then I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and I'll be getting x equals 2 plus minus i. Of course, you could write these the separately, which is kind of more clear, 2 minus i and 2 plus i as solutions. So this equation has two solutions. But wait a minute. Isn't that a cubic system? Well, yes and no. It looks cubic, but it's actually not cubic, which you'll see in a little bit. Uh, why it is quadratic instead of cubic. All right? And that will probably be the second method that kind of shows you um, why it's... Well, you could probably clearly say that x cubed cancels out, but uh, we'll, we'll take a look at it from another angle. You get the idea? Easy. Plug it in. It cancels out. So pretty much any type of system, any system like this can be solved easily, right? Like if you had x plus y equals a, and you could actually try this as an exercise 
x cubed plus y cubed equals b, or b cubed, some people put b cubed there, no big deal. Or sometimes if you make it a cubed, of course, that's going to be a total different idea. But the question is, this equation doesn't have real solutions, or the system. Uh, does this system have real solutions? Depends on the values of a and b. And you can kind of search for, for which values of a and b, this is going to have real solutions, or for which values of a and b, this is going to have complex uh, real solutions, complex non-real solutions. Make sense? Okay. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method now. All right? So for our second method, let me rewrite the problem. x plus y is equal to 4, and x cubed plus y cubed is equal to 4. By the way, this general case is basically an um, interesting problem because depending on the values of a and b, you're going to get different sets of solutions. So it's, I think, worth exploring. Anyways, so with the second method, instead of just substitution, we are going to use some identities. You know, x cubed plus y cubed is a sum of two cubes, right? So we can factor it, can't we? But how do you factor it? Well, we can kind of write it as follows. x cubed plus y cubed can be written as x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. And you might be questioning, where does this come from? Right? Where on earth does this come from? If you distribute, you're going to get this. But how do you get this complicated product from something that looks simple? Right? So that's going to be a good question to answer. We can go ahead and take this and cube it. Obviously, with the binomial theorem, if you cube x plus y, you're going to get the following. And remember, we used this formula with the first method. And then I would like to put these two together. And then these two terms is uh, factorable r, 3xy, you can factor out. And this is actually an identity that I, I use very often. You probably noticed, especially when I want to use the, what's that called? Cubic formula, yes. Uh, so let's go ahead and put these on the same side. So we get x plus y cubed minus 3xy, x plus y equals x cubed plus y cubed. And this is the very identity that I use for cubic formula because you can call this z and then this is going to be z and you get a cubic equation in z and you can basically solve it solve it by turning this into a quadratic system okay but anyways that's not the uh, that's not our goal our goal is actually to prove wh why this formula exists right the sum of two cubes and from here basically x plus y can be factored out and we get x plus y squared minus 3xy equals x cubed plus y cubed. I left it on the right hand side, but that's okay. And now we can uh, simplify the second factor. This is x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. 2xy minus 3xy is going to be negative xy, so I can kind of write it in sort of like standard form, and that gives us our identity. So the sum of two cubes comes from here, and if you replace y with negative y, you get the difference of two cubes. Same thing, pretty much. Okay, so now what am I going to do with that? I'll take these two equations and use the identity. So let's go ahead and do it. x plus y equals 4, x cubed plus y cubed equals 4. So let's go ahead and solve this system by using that identity. So this will be factored as x plus y and then times x squared minus xy plus y squared. And that's also 4, right? Great. Now, we do know that this is equal to 4, so this is going to become 1, right, by division. Yes, but how is that going to help me? I don't have x plus y. I only have x, y, and x squared plus y squared. But guess what? x squared plus y squared and x plus y are related. So you can actually square x plus y, right? And when you do, you get x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. I like to write that at the end. So from here, you can go ahead and isolate this by subtraction. So x squared plus y squared from here becomes x plus y squared minus 2xy by way of subtraction. And then you can go ahead and substitute that here, right? And here. So let's take it, uh, let's take it from there. x squared plus y squared minus xy equals 1. This is what we get from here, right? And then I'm going to replace x squared plus y squared with this. I mean that. So it's going to become x plus y squared 
minus 2xy minus xy equals 1, and that gives me x plus y squared minus 3xy equals 1. But we know that x plus y is equal to 4, so now this is going to be a 4. That's going to be a 16, so this needs to be a 15. Therefore, xy needs to be a 5, and we already know x plus y is equal to 4. By way of substitution, we can get the quadratic formula or using Viata's formulas. This is going to be t squared minus 4t plus 5 equals 0. And the solution set is going to be the same as before, 2 minus i and 2 plus i as the complex pair or solutions. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two functions. Wait a minute. Are these functions or relations, whatever? Wait a minute, they don't intersect because there are no real solutions. So this is the complex deal, not the real deal. All right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.